Okay, in this video, we're going to go a complete project here of using Dreamweaver to make a web page and a valid XHTML 1.0 strict web page and publish it to the web using our domain account logins. So, I've got Dreamweaver open, but this isn't really where I want to start first. You want to make sure that your file management is organized. When you're working on a website, file management is critical. So what I'm going to do first is I'm just going to go ahead and open up my classes folder and I'm going to go to my Dreamweaver folder. I'll just go ahead and open that so I can view it normally here. So I've already got some files in here. So I'll simply right click in a blank area, create a new folder. And I'll go ahead and call this uh, Demos 09 Summer. There we go. So now I've got this folder that's empty. All of my web pages and all of my subfolders in here are going to mirror what's on the web, what's on my web server. Okay, so right now I've got nothing and that's fine, but I think I will go ahead and progress a little bit here. And I'm going to um, create another new folder and I'll call this one Images. And I'll create another new folder and this one I'm going to call Styles. So I'll have a folder to keep my image files and a folder to keep my style sheets. Things we'll get into soon enough. And then later on I might want to create a folder just for JavaScript files or for Flash files. All right, so everything I do is going to go inside of my demos09 summer folder and I'll have HTML files in here and then I'll keep image files and style files in these subfolders. Now that I've got that set up, I'm back over at Dreamweaver and I do have a blank document here. It's untitled. I could go to File, New to ensure that I've got a new document. Um, let's see, I've got a blank page, HTML, none for layout, and for doc type I'm going to choose XHTML 1.0 strict. And I'll click Create, and here we go. So I'll start off just by creating some simple things on my web page. I can use the Headline 1, and this is my Insert Panel. Okay, This is the Insert Panel up here. I've got my Text tab, and I can put in uh, Practice Page for Dreamweaver and then I can type some normal text and you can type in Dreamweaver in design mode pretty much like you're typing in a word processor. So the insert panel allows me to put in various headlines even though there's three listed here there's a four, five, and six. I've got bulleted list, numbered lists, and I can create list items within either of those two kinds. Definition list, terms and definitions, these are rarely used. There's a few other options over here. Of course, more familiar ones on the far left, bold italics. Um, that's going to be a strong, which is like bold, and emphasis, which is like italics. More about that later on. So I've got a bunch of options over here. Over on the right side, I've got some more panels that I'm not going to get into right now, but in a little bit I will be using this one files panel so that we can connect to the site and upload. So I've got my practice page, and just so you can see how easy it is to make a hyperlink, when you click on a particular part of your page, the Properties panel, which mine is down here at the bottom, will give you features or properties for whatever is currently active. So I could select the word Dreamweaver, go down here to Link, put in a web address, like Adobe, and then now the word Dreamweaver will be a hyperlink to the Adobe website and I could also insert images and so forth. I'm going to hold off on that for now and I want to show you real quick how I can connect over to my site. Okay, In Dreamweaver it's got a built-in FTP client or file transfer protocol client and you'll want to connect to your site on a regular basis so that you can upload files. Now I'm going to provide space on the web for you and that's going to include a host address, a username and password so you'll be getting all the information you need to connect but here's how it goes. Now just I already have my files panel open but if I didn't I'm sorry, yeah, my, my sites over here. So I could click on Window, and I could see there's Files, F8. Now it goes away. And there it is again, Files, F8. So I can open and close that pretty easily. And what I want to do is I'm going to click on this first drop down, and I've already set it up with a few other sites that I've got, but I'm going to go to Manage Sites, and I'm going to create a new one, a new site. And the site in question, let's see, each of you is going to have a various site. I'm going to go ahead and call mine something easy to remember, webdev80. Yours is going to be something pretty similar to that. And the address will be webdev80.czc-webdev.com. So you'll have a very similar address. You'll probably have a different number, though. 
and I'll click next no I don't want to use a server technology next edit local copies on my machine that's true where on your computer do you want to store your files okay so this is where on your local computer so I'm gonna make sure mine's accurate so I'm gonna click on my browse button and there it is there's my summer 09 let's make sure it's in my classes oh that's the wrong one I need to go to classes Dreamweaver and here it is demos 09 summer that's where I want to keep mine this is the folder demos 09 summer where I'm gonna keep all of my web pages so I'm telling Dreamweaver where all of my web pages are going to be stored. Um, you could also actually call this, you know, I could have called it WebDev80, that would have been a pretty uh, smart way to name this as well. So I'll click select. Next. How do I want to connect to my remote server? Via FTP. Now here we go. Now all the information you need for this I will provide to you. The host name for me is WebDev80. The folder on my server is going to be WebDev80. I'll oh, take that back. The folder is going to be webdev80.cucc-webdev.com. Like I said, I'll provide all the information you need for this. My FTP login and my password. And I'm going to test it out and see if it works. Okay, so it says it can't be found. So I'm going to click OK for a moment and just check for a typo. Okay, it's actually webdev80.cocc-webdev.com for my host address. And now I'm going to do another test connection. It's connected successfully. That's a good sign. So I'll click Next. No, do not enable check-in and check-out. Next. And just gives me some uh, summary information and done. So now WebDev80 is one of the sites I can connect to through Dreamweaver. Done. Here we go, WebDev80. And on WebDev80, these are my local files. Currently, I don't have anything. I can see this is my local view. If I were to jump over to Remote View, this is how it looks online. Now, you're not going to have as many subfolders as I've got. I've used this domain before, so I've got quite a few subfolders in there. So just kind of ignore that for a moment. But it'll be kind of similar. You'll see this domain folder up here. I'm going to go back to Local View. Let me take this page, File, Save As, and I'm going to save it. It's in my, it's going into my local Demos 09 Summer folder, and I'm going to call it Practice1.html. Now it's saved. Notice it's over here, Practice1.html, and now I'm going to upload. I'll simply click on this file once and hit the blue up arrow to put the file to the server. Do I want to put dependent files? Now in this case, in my example, if I choose yes or no, it's not going to make a difference. A dependent file is another file associated with your web page file. For instance, like an image that you've linked to, or a CSS file and things like that. Sometimes it's helpful, but a lot of times it's redundant and not necessary, because you may not need to re-upload images if you've uploaded them before. So I'm going to choose no for now. Put dependent files, no. It's going to upload my one practice onehtml Now if I go to my remote view I could see how it looks online and sure enough there's my practice onehtml uploaded to my server back to local view and here's how you can really test it out I can simply go to my browser here in Firefox I'm gonna type in my web address webdev80.cucc-webdev.com slash and then the name of the file that I'd like to look at practice onehtml and there it is so this is the web address my web page is published